Dylan, I'm curious about winding up on this movie, and I'm sure after your, your other acting work in films and television, you are probably reading a lot of scripts and trying to figure out what to do next. What about Maze Runner kind of stuck, up, stuck out as, as different than everything else that's floating around Hollywood? Uh, just a reminder to everybody, we're going to show some clips tonight when we show them. If you could turn your cell phones off. Can't record anything. All right, all right, let's, let's simmer. Let's do this. All right, all right. Let's cut. We're going to have a conversation. We're going to have a Q&A later, so everybody hold on, to, hold on to your seats. Grip them, perhaps. James, uh, let's, yes. let's start with the text, the tome. Um, I know that you're, uh, you're an author. You love books, but I, I, was, I spent some time on your website the other night, and you love movies. You love television. So since we're talking about the movie version of Maze Runner, what, what movies and television shows influence this book? Well, uh, first of all, it's great to be here tonight. I am honored to be a part of this family. Uh, and I can easily tell you some, some awesome movies or TV that influenced my book. And that was when I was a kid, I saw this movie that scarred me for life. I don't know why my parents let me watch it. It's called The Shining. And there's this real happy scene at the end where a guy's chasing his kid with an ax trying to kill him. Um, inside this giant garden maze, and it freaked me out and has stuck with me my whole life. And then uh, Lord of the Flies and Lost. And you turned it all into one thing. How do you do that? Dude, does it, it, does it all start with the maze? I mean, yeah, the maze was probably the first image I had. It became its own character, and then everything just kind of developed. And. Uh, and Dylan, apparently. And then Dylan came up. Um, I'm curious. <laughs> Temper! We're never going to be able to talk. Guys, I'm curious, um, because this movie is so much about people not knowing what is going on in the glade, in the maze, they have no idea. Did you end up reading James's book beforehand? I mean, was that important to you, or did you want to keep some secrets? Did, I mean, is not knowing better? Um, Awkward. <laughs> yeah. James will not be offended. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's about to get weird. Um, this is working, right? Okay, yeah. I can't hear anything. Thanks. No, neither can I. Um, uh, well, I thought it was important to dive into the book. Um, I only had like four days to do it, though. And I'm not a fast reader. So I got halfway and then, and then shot the movie and then didn't have time to read <laughs> and then finished it at the end. Spark notes. All right, I know. I've been disappointing crowds across the nation. <laughs> Thank you. But at least I'm honest. I'm, you know, I'm not just like, I'm not like, yeah, I know it inside and out. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, I'm curious about wi winding up on this movie, and I'm sure after your, your other acting work in films and television, you are probably reading a lot of scripts and trying to figure out what to do next. What about Maze Runner kind of stuck, up, stuck out as, as different than everything else that's floating around Hollywood? Um, a big selling point was that uh, I was available to do it. <laughs> With only four days before you show it, or to read the book. Yeah, yeah, I got off. I, it, it was the, uh, the eight weeks that we shot this movie in were right in uh, the eight weeks that I had off from Teen Wolf, so. <laughs> Yay! Go, Teen Wolf! <laughs> um, thanks! Um, and... <laughs> and, um... And so it's sort of a perfect ideal situation because uh, of that being a factor always, you know, like I have to, you know, it has to work with my schedule. And then it's also just, it was such a great story that I genuinely like loved from the first time I read it. I loved how it's told. I loved the character that I was going out for. And, uh, you know, and then every step of the way through the experience, it just got better and better and better until now. It's just like such a special thing to me. Um, so it's amazing how it worked out. I'm so lucky. I, um, I'm sure that, uh I'm curious for everybody, I, I find Wes Ball to be a real visionary guy. Wes's Genius. short film that he made is really impressive. Everyone should go on YouTube and watch Wes's short film, Ruin. It's really great. Um, I'm curious about how he relayed his vision for this film, what 
perhaps made him an interesting choice for this and what he was really looking to do with Maze Runner that might be so different than other people. And this is for everybody. Yeah, well, the first time I met with him, um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've told these guys this like over and over. He, for three hours, took me through binderfuls of like the world that he had already sketched and he previs, which is like, you know, basically uh, on his computer, he already sort of put together the scene, certain sequences and how he wanted to do them. And uh, he had the whole world, you could see it before your eyes, like just kind of in, you know, in all of his designs. Uh, he had worked so hard on it already before we started shooting, and he was really realistic about what we were about to do, too, what we were up against, you know, the amount of time that we had to shoot this movie in, and uh, what it was going to be, the, you know, the challenge that it was going to be. And I, I just took him as a really, really smart um, guy, and, uh, and so well prepared and uh, such a genius vision for the movie, as far as I could see. And it just kept getting better from there. Do you think he works differently than other people because he has an animation background? Is that, what, what is that? Yeah, he's definitely a lot more energetic and like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't expecting that today. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, sweet. But <laughs> now you've done it. Yeah, I think uh, he just had a lot of energy. He was uh, very in, uh, enthusiastic um, every day on set. I think his energy sort of, uh, I don't know, it made us you know, more excited to film on set every day because he just had a certain energy and a certain excitement that. It's a, it's you know, a childlike enthusiasm. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Does it, does it feel like you're working inside of his animated film in some way that might be different oh, yeah. than just acting in smaller movies or different types of character pieces? I don't know. He's just extremely visionary. When I, the first time he took me around the set, I mean, he just, he had every shot completely memorized and, and visualized in his head, and he somehow portrayed that to me. He's just, and when the, the first time he showed me concept art, it was like he had jumped inside my brain and ripped it out. So I knew he was the right guy from the start. Why don't we watch a clip from the film and get a taste for what Wes is serving us? It'll probably involve running. Dylan, Dylan, you have. Dylan, you kind of have a Star Wars moment. You're you're being trapped by the trash compactor. Yeah. What is that? Is that a, what kind of rig is that? Is that are you being squished? Well, I didn't have to be in that water, which looked terrible. Um, yeah. Uh, does no one get? Has anyone seen Star Wars here? Okay. Okay. Um. Um. Uh. I don't know. It. It. it I'm kind of claustrophobic, so. It was, yeah. That's the last shot great. of the film. He gets squished, and it's over. That's it. It's a great short. That's the end of the movie. What no one knows from the trailer is that that's actually the last scene of the film. Yeah. We changed a lot from the book. So different. Um, I, I, this might be an assumption, but there's a, did you have to train for running in this movie? There's quite a bit of it. And uh, I just made yeah. everyone groan. That was the only groan of the night. Um, I, I am curious about the physicality of the roles and how much training was involved and like, what you had to do. So. Um, no, it was actually, again, you know, we didn't have much time before doing the movie. So, um, it's kind of perfect uh, uh, for the spirit of the story that, you know, that I'm, I'm always exhausted when I'm running. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because he's, he's, they're just kids. Yeah, right? Running sucks. Um, we're, just, we're just kids trying to survive, you know? And if we're all just, like, looking like Olympic athletes, you know, trained, like, marathon runners, then that's kind of, kind of takes away from the idea a little bit, so... Uh, that wasn't a priority of, of Wes's or mine or uh, ours. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas, I'm curious about uh, Newt's been on the Glade for a while, and um, besides the training in terms of like... <laughs> along with the obvious like fight training and that kind of stuff, was there a lot of like survival training? You guys are Swiss Family Robinsoning out there. Uh, you spend no, a lot of time chopping Newt, really. He's kind of stuck in the fields <laughs> doing his own thing. <laughs> hey, guys. They know you love them. You're going to have more fun if you actually listen to what they say, all right? <laughs> You're a good dad. 
I'm the dad of this group. I didn't actually hear you, Thomas. <laughs> Damn it. Oh. oh. Well, actually, we did. We were kind of trained a bit by two U.S. Marines. We did like two weeks before. We were um, we were put into our into the glade basically, and got to kind of familiarize ourselves with the surroundings and taught how to use our machetes and and taught ab about the, the different plants around and the different poisonous snakes and animals and stuff and how to deal with that. And But also, at the same time, it was kind of like a team-building exercise, um, which I hate. <laughs> but it was masked as like a cool thing to do. You hate team-building. Um, it's essential to this movie. <laughs> it worked, Fail. though. It worked. We all got on very well, and we learned about our surroundings as well. So we got to know our location really well. Yeah. I'm supposed to have been there for three years. And I got to know everyone here very well as well and got to kind of work with them as a team and well uh, yeah I was gonna ask about how I mean in a lot of movies you hear people ask oh were you guys best friends or did you get along really well and whatever but I mean the camaraderie in this film is tangible it's it's really extraordinary and I'm curious is that just days spent on set is that like beating the heat wherever you're filming and and trying to make it through this kind of exhausting endeavor and a lot of luck I mean we would have either completely fallen in love with each other or completely hated each other <laughs> you know um, you know, it goes one way or the other. You're, you're spending, you know, 12, 15, sometimes 16 hours a day with each other. So it's like, and then, you know, and then time on top of that, we would just choose to spend with each other anyway because uh, we so genuinely just get along. And, uh, you know, we, yeah, we've been... Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it was natural from the get-go, and it's a really lucky and rare thing, I think, um, you know. And I think it comes across in the film as well. I think you can see our relationships together with one another in the film. Uh, Kai, I'm curious about you coming into this kind of boys club as both approaching a character who is the only woman among these boys and also the actress coming into this boys club. Was that, were, were those two in the same? Were you able to kind of use that and, and bring it to the movie? Um, no, I think what I love the most about these boys is that they didn't ever make me feel like a girl. I never felt like the woman on set. I was a friend. Um, I was a co-worker, um, we had fun, and, and we worked together, and we built scenes, and, and that was it. We just got on as human beings straight away. Um, and, like, I don't have any brothers in real life, but I have a lot of male friends. I like male company, and, and they're, they are my brothers completely now. Um, well, how do you how do you start? You were talking about building scenes and building character. How do you do that with someone you don't really know anything about and who really is the outsider of the group? Where do you start with? Well, that's the Teresa? fun for me. I think uh, what I loved about her, she goes, she arrives. She has no memory, and instead of being like, oh, can I make tea and biscuits for everyone? I want to make friends. There's none of that bullshit. I would love biscuits. <laughs> I love biscuits. You're not getting any biscuits from me. I want me. biscuits. <laughs> Uh, she's a tough chick straight away. She she gets stuck in there, and uh, and the connection she feels with Thomas was really important because we can't use uh, the t I can't say the fucking word. How do you telepathy? Uh, telepathy. Telepathy. I can't say that word. Uh, I can't say museum. It's okay. I say museum. <laughs> Where does that come from? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know what I was saying, but yeah, they're great. <laughs> <laughs> it was enlightening. Um, we, we do have a few questions from social media for this event, so I, I want to... Don't know, this is a great question. It's going to strike up controversy. Actually, um, uh, Maria Laura from Facebook wonders if you could take one of your cast members into the maze with you, who would it be and why? Now you're going to burn bridges. We built up the relationships, and now we're going to burn them down. <laughs> I loved that. You know, you should have gotten a better reaction. Yeah. They don't love me. Like, can you repeat my line so that they, uh, <laughs> they love me? Um, what do you think, Chris? Uh, yeah, it's you. Gosh, one of us. One. One. We well, can't go into the maze with the whole crew. You can choose. I would take me. one of the goats, because they're just <laughs> the goats were so cute on set. They're so like they're like the baby kept going to its mom. And like it kept like, you know, screwing up the takes because it was like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just got well, no one's gonna out adorable <laughs> that. So. Uh... <laughs> oh my God! 
The goats are here in the front. That was crazy. That was you guys fun. need to tweet that. Dylan likes goats. <laughs> That's what I get for answering the questions, I guess. Alex, uh, Jacob, you guys, who do you take in the maze? Uh, I think, I mean, obviously, uh, if you've seen the movie already, I would say Dylan's character. I mean, he has the will to survive. <laughs> Did you say me? <laughs> yeah. Dude, you were the first person to ever answer me, man. Yeah, That's bro. Awesome. I mean, like, it's either like you or Kihong. You guys are the maze runners. You guys are like... You guys survive? You guys know the maze? Why not? <laughs> I want to live. <laughs> uh, James, I'm curious for you. Hey, um, you know, having your book, adapt, book adapted can be, it's like giving away your baby, right? Uh, how, how did you feel about how Wes and, and the writing team complicated, changed, challenged what you had written, and, and how is it different? You know, anyone who follows me, I haven't been able to shut up about how much how happy I've been with this production. But uh, from the very beginning when I saw concept art and I read the script and I visited the set, I knew it was in good hands. And uh, I seriously, they nailed it. And the little changes they had to make, I fully support because some things that work in a book do not work in a movie. And I keep telling people this is a way, if you're a fan of the books, to experience this story for the first time again. So you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Is, is there anything is there anything that you think not necessarily got better but changed in uh, like I, I did not think about that while writing the maze runner oh yeah there are so many things in this movie that I'm like man that is better than the book uh, especially the grievers they are just absolutely spectacular um, they're better than the book you, you said backstage that you do a really good griever impression uh, <laughs> but you have to pay me a lot of money to see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first the movie can make lots of money. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, I actually have another question from our live stream from Mariana Sofia, who says, if you could describe your experience writing The Maze Runner in one word, what word would that be? You're a wordsmith, so it's just a big one. Cool. <laughs> no, I, I keep making fun of myself, because every time I go to places, I just keep saying the word awesome over and over, but... It's the word, man. Everything has just been awesome. I love I loved the story. It was very special to me, and my wife loved it, and we kept pushing it, even though it got rejected at first, and I didn't give up, and it's, it's just been awesome, and the movie is awesome-er. I am, uh, I'm assuming there's no glade and no maze in real life. So, yeah, right? They, 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 Con they confirmed? Oh, there is they a glade. Did. So what is the glade it's in... It's in Louisiana. In, okay. On the, on the Thompson farm. Oh, Th yeah. You remember the Thompson? Wait, Kaya's feeling nostalgic about where they shot the movie. Where did you shoot the movie? Like, what, in what is Louisiana, the deal with this place? In Louisiana, in Baton Rouge, in a giant field um, that was beautiful. <laughs> it, it was a glade. Um, and there were snakes and horse flies and gunshots and it was real Cows. Louisiana. It was actually a cow uh, herd gunshots? that came through. It was actually a cow herd that came oh, through. Oh yeah, right? there was yeah. a cow attack on Yeah, set. we almost got attacked by cows. <laughs> uh, before we get too much further, why don't we show the second clip from the movie? <laughs> We're spoiling it. Please still see the movie. So we've established that the glade is real, but I assume that a maze where things are falling on top of you may not be. How do you pull something like that off? Where, where are you actually shooting? Yeah. That, what you just saw, was on the side of a highway in a parking lot. Was it? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100%. An abandoned parking lot. Like, not an abandoned parking lot. That's, that doesn't make sense. Um, it was like a shut down. No cars ever parked. <laughs> <laughs> it's really clean. Yeah. Untouched, exactly. freshly paved from four years ago, <laughs> abandoned. Um, it was like some shutdown, like uh, like a building had been torn down there, and so there's like a bunch of like sort of debris and stuff, and just an empty parking lot with cars going by on the highway, and uh, they just had a big blue screen like up, and we just shot there for a whole week every day, putting together that sequence. Is is green screen a problem anymore? Are or people like, oh, we we do so many movies with green screen these days. 
imagining what's there or running away from nothing isn't a big deal. But is it still really a challenge? Is it? Uh, For me, I'd taxing? never worked with it before, so I, I was really worried. Um, but when you have someone like Wes, who can stand there and talk you through every single thing that's about to happen, and and it's such a beautiful thing to be able to take your mind back to being a child and just use your imagination completely. Um, whatever scares you the most, you can see in front of you as the griever or as, as the maze. Uh, and for each of us, that's something different. So to get to just allow your mind to do that is really fun. And it was exciting for me because, does the echo not freak you out? No, it does. It's horrible, right? Oh. You know, the echo, you know, like when you're on the phone and you can hear your voice. It's fucking horrible. Um, they're always like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, this is a special effects heavy movie, but there's so much character drama when you guys are kind of just stewing about the Glade. I'm wondering what kind of conversations you had with Wes about that. Does he come at it from, he, he seems to know his movies, he seems to know his drama. How, does, how is he talking to you about these characters and kind of putting you in a frame of mind to have conflict with everyone else? Well, it was really important um, to Wes, and I think that's what makes him so incredible. You know, like, he could have very easily um, just, like, lifted this from the page and just made it a crazy action movie, you know, with, like, no substance. But what he in instead focused on primarily was these relationships because he knew at the heart of the book and the story, that's what mattered the most. And that's what people are, that's what's gonna make a really good film rather than just, like, a cool looking, you know, f action movie. And he knew he had that ge his genius, you know, visual effects skills that he's just like so stoically confident in. He just kind of knew, and had already prepared and laid out for for like a year before shooting what that was going to be. And then so then our time on set, which was really limited, um, was going to be all about you know uh, the characters. And and I think that's what separates it um, from just another action movie. What makes it a really good film. And it, it was Wes's idea to bring us all. Uh, what t some of you were here there two weeks before we started. Yeah, I came. I think I was I was the last one there. I got there about a week and a half before, and it was his idea to have us all there to bond and to know each other. And uh, I, I, th I, for me, that was that was huge because the 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 stuff with us and the banishment was very early on in the filming process, and even just in that week and a half, how um, close we all got together and all the, everything that we went through and and uh, all of that played so heavily for, for me personally, for, for the banishment especially. And uh, I th I, so I think that was really important for with, with Wes for me. And I know we discussed that a little bit. And uh, yeah, it, a lot of it is due to him. I'd definitely be interested to hear about you guys too, about like yeah. how Wes is creating, or your entry point. What, what part do you play in this society? I mean, well, individually, uh, he made himself so available to all of us where we, at any point we could kind of go to him and ask him. So. Uh, I was thinking this about my character, and then he could he would talk us through what he had planned and just meld it together and really focus on on your character and story backstory and what goes further. Yeah. It was great. And uh, I think um, like my character, I think it was definitely a, played a smaller role in the book, and he sort of brought more to the forefront in the film. So um, it, that allowed me to sort of kind of develop my character on my own and sort of almost put myself into it um, and see the, thing, see the things, the reactions that I would have uh, with certain conflicts in the Glade or um, even a guy like, you know, Dylan's character come in and yeah, I think he kind of gave my character some sort of hope and uh, you kind of see that in the film, which I sort of switched sides in the film later on, so. Chris, I, I, I wanted to go back to something that you mentioned, not, not to get too spoilery or anything, but you have some seriously rigorous moments and encounter, um, and I'm curious about how you play something like that that's very, like, uh, it's very strange, I'll put it that way, and, and yeah, playing something 100%. like that really physical, how do, you, how do you go there? To be honest with you, I, I did not know what to expect at all, <laughs> especially being the last one cast and... I mean, I think a day or two later, put on a plane, ended up in Louisiana, saw you guys in the hotel, and then we started throwing football. Yeah, we all out. stayed in one hotel, yeah. which was like the bomb, like <laughs> the bomb. Um, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what to, to expect as far as uh, filming-wise, and I think that actually was the best part of, of this for me as an actor, was um, I really had to just th trust Wes, trust uh, James, trust these guys, and... Um, to truly just, what was amazing too though was that everything was very visceral and very real because the glade was built and the walls moved, the poles 
hurt. <laughs> I mean, everything, I mean, I was so banged. I mean, the first Sorry. rehearsal with the banishment, uh, Enrique, our incredible DP, was like, okay, I'm going to put the camera on the end, and then I'm going to, and, and he hits me straight in the face, right? Before we, before we even started, I was like, oh, come okay. on. All right, all right. He's like, we'll do it again. <laughs> okay. So aggressive. And, and so, and we had to, we actually had to restart shooting that scene three times because the doors, the first time we had some issues with them, the first time we did it, the doors went so fast. <laughs> and I was, they're like, okay, we're gonna go. I'm like, great. And the doors started, I'm like, oh, God! <laughs> they came in so fast. They're like, we're gonna do it a different day. I'm like, great. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, uh, unlike other science fiction movies that might have like lasers and all sorts of high-tech gadgetry, here you guys are just getting poked with sticks, like a lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it looks like it hurts a it, lot. It, let me tell you, it, 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 it did, but it, uh, it, nothing, it, truly though, nothing hurt worse than seeing my friends, who really did become and are my family now, uh, push me to, to They go love that. To, 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 to push me. <laughs> Here, here's some useless trivia for you. We love that. In the first couple of drafts of the Maze Runner, the scene of Ben's banishment was not in the book. What? <laughs> Chill. <laughs> Outrage <laughs> down here in the front. <laughs> but before anyone ever saw it, don't worry, before it got published, I, this, this scene came to me and I thought it was really important. It established so many things about the Glade and the attitude and spirit of the Glade and the Gladers and how they treated law and order. And uh, I added that scene and it's one of my top three favorite parts of the movie. So good job. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's an amazing scene. Thank you. Um, James, I am curious ab about your conversations with Wes, it's just about like what, you know, it's all about kill your darlings at some point, and Wes is gonna make this movie, and, and you're gonna watch it happen, but was there anything that felt really precious, or is there anything that you wanted to talk to Wes about, or he talked to you about to pick your brain? The cool thing about Wes, it was very evident that he cared about fans of the books from the very beginning. Uh, he was thrilled that I understood because I love movies so much, that things have to change. You can't just literally translate a book. It's always boring, just trust me. Um, and so he would email me all the time with the smallest little things. Like, all right, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much is this going to tick off your readers? Um, <laughs> and we'd talk back and forth. I think one of the biggest things a lot of people talk about is in the book they have these implants and they can telepathically speak, Thomas and Teresa. And if you've ever seen a movie with telepathy, it's just cheesy. I'm sorry. <laughs> it works in the book. Those things, it just does not. <laughs> oh, my God, it's working. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> so you do not want to know what they're saying right now. <laughs> but I was totally okay with that change, and I think Wes... It shows you how much he cared about the book. He said, well, I'm going to find other ways to show that there's some kind of weird connection between Thomas and Teresa, and he definitely succeeded in doing that. But it's not a romance. It's not a romance. It's not a friends. Unless you want it to be. It can change? <laughs> there's still time? It's a choose-your-own-adventure movie. It's really cool. Uh, and, and just wrap up our, our chit chat. I'm curious, kind of going off what Chris was mentioning about the banishment scene. I'm curious if there were big moments for each of you, just like that, kind of pushed you to your limits making this movie, especially sorry, considering say, the conditions. Say a question one more time. So, if there were moments during this movie that pushed you to your limits or that were particularly strenuous, um. For me, that's. I think it was all fun for me. I think that's more of a question for Dylan. I mean, he was. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm an answer, but I think, I, I think it was. It I think was, it was it just was, drinking cappuccino in the at the food cart. No. no, I don't remember. It was like a day he had off. Like I don't remember seeing him like lounging around. I always seen him working or working on his script or on set. So for me, it was. For me, it wasn't really that much. It was. Just, it was fun, if anything. <laughs> so hot down there. Yeah, it was fun. I'm a, I'm a city boy, but you know, being in the woods, it was kind of. In the field in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I love you too. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I think uh, that was different. You know, the heat was crazy. The bugs were crazy. I'm afraid of snakes. I hate snakes. I actually recorded it on my phone. I'm going to post it soon. Uh, anyway. 
<laughs> but uh, I think, yeah, it was, it was all fun for me. I think that's more of a question for Dylan because he worked his butt off, for real, for real, for real. All right, Dylan, you're up then, I guess. Um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was, that's what made the whole experience a, a challenge. You know, I had never uh, worked that many days on a, uh, on a set before, like, you know, in that amount of time and that, you know, that many hours every week and, you know, the short turnarounds and then the work that I was doing every day. It was a lot, but um, I literally think, um, I literally think I got through it because I could come home to these guys every night and at least just like have like an hour or two of like winding down. <laughs> um, when when the crowd starts awing, can I am I still audible or like do I have to like then just cool it? Okay, cool. So I'll just keep talking and just focus. Yes, use telepathy. How about when you want to say ah, just do this. There you go. Okay. You are an educator. I don't know. That's never mind. That's weird. Stop. That's scary. Well, I I, uh, I did have to think about. People, you know, if you if you've done television, if you've done stage work, whatever acting you've done in your past, this seems like eight thousand times bigger and more intense. And I'm just imagining people jumping up on the walls and running away from grievers. And I imagine that it might be different than something like Teen Wolf. I don't know. <laughs> Were you talking to me? I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> I am. Dylan's having a I, meltdown. <laughs> I am so sorry. No. I space out sometimes. Dylan. What was Chris is gonna it like translate. doing Teen Wolf versus The Maze Runner? Thanks. You're welcome. Sorry. Sorry. I'm really, truly sorry. I, wrong time to start jamming the mic under, into Thomas's... <laughs> he probably deserved it. I, I don't know. Leg. Um, uh, it, was a, it was a big difference. Um, and, like, you know, I don't... I, I get to do a lot of things on Teen Wolf, but I'm always playing the same character, and it was just kind of nice to, uh, thank you, thanks, thanks. Um, it's, it's always nice, you know, as an actor, I think, yeah, you know, you're always looking to do different things and, not, and try something that you've never done before, you know, and uh, this was, you know, that in so many ways for me, and I got to do it, um, you know, again, like I talked about before, like uh, just sort of on a whim, it worked out and got to shoot it when I had the weeks off from the show, and it was a great, Great, great experience. Why don't we open up to uh, Q&A out here and take some, some audience questions. I cannot believe I think, they're, I think they've selected some people out there already. I was told. I was told. Um, what's happening? What? <laughs> what's happening? My, my, uh... <laughs> I think there's somebody out there with a microphone, so hold, hold on for a second. I, yes, yeah, slide it to me. All right, there was, okay. okay. Great, thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Hi. I'm sorry that took so long. <laughs> okay, yes. Hi, okay, this is really exciting. Um, hi, Dylan, I'm Laura. Hi. <laughs> Um, so my question is for you. Um, if you were stuck in the glade and you had to face the maze, would you rather have with you um, either the cast from Teen Wolf, the Mets, or One Direction? <laughs> That's a good question. Um. <laughs> That's a, really a hard good question. question. That was like, good job, by the way. <laughs> Money. Um, I gotta go with my Mets. Uh, yeah. You see, now in other cities, I get booed when I say that. Uh, or, or everyone's just like, who are the Mets? Um, go Mets. Yeah, baby. It's gonna be a big year next year. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, they're my heroes, and also there's a lot, that's the most uh, amount of people, so need, need all the bodies you can get. More limbs. The sheer size of the Mets. Is it what about? Much bigger. Yeah. The size of them. Uh, uh, another question over here. <laughs> okay. Let her uh, speak. Um, oh, 
Gosh. Okay. What was the biggest difference between the book and the movie for each of you guys? And if you haven't read the book, well, shame on you. No. Well, I already said, I mean, the <laughs> telepathy thing was a big deal. I really think everything else was pretty minor, but I don't know if each um, one of them would have an answer for that. When I, when I, uh, so when I went into shooting this, I had Galley in my mind as like, you know, like I hate that guy and we all hate that guy. What a vicious, nasty, you know, evil human being. Um, and while we, when we started shooting then, Will, uh, you know, Will Poulter, um, one, of the most, one of the most brilliant things about his performance is what he did with Galley is that like he so teetered that line of like being insanely, you know, like uh, such a nuisance to my character clearly and like you know um you know always go always going at it with anything that I tr was trying to do um but like he was always really understandable and like a lot more reasonable than I think he comes off when you read the book you kind of like I, I think I think I, I maybe it was just me I had a really evil image of him and the way Will plays it is like genius because it's like you know he's the antagonist yes but he's uh he's not like just like a villain he's not like an evil crazy you know you, you get him. You understand. I'm going to stop uh, talking. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think the book, um, it seemed like the guys were a lot more hairy than we were. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Fry Pan had like a big beard, and he didn't have a big beard in the film. So I think the looks were a little bit different, um, but that's really about it. I think the, the film pretty catered to the nature of the book. So. James, I have to quickly ask you, because I don't know if this... Avoid spoilers here, but what did you think of the Griever design? Oh, the Grievers, you know, like I said, they're kind of like the ones in the book on steroids. Uh, they just, they really fit the cinematic vision of what I pictured in my head, and uh, they are spectacular. Another question out here? Someone... Hi, thank you all for being here tonight. Um, I suppose this question is more for Mr. Dashner, but really for everyone. Uh, books like The Maze Runner and other wildly popular YA series, uh, movies like Blade Runner, and also um, TV series like Dark Angel, or to some extent Dollhouse, uh, dystopia and post-apocalyptic post stories are so appealing, and I was wondering what you thought the draw was, uh, really, for us as... Um, consumers of media and you guys as storytellers, why they are so appealing to us on such a visceral level. I think, I get asked that a lot. She basically asked, you know, why is this genre so popular? I think, I think teenagers and adults, all of us, shh, are really, really smart. Smarter than we give them credit for. And they watch the news and they see the world. And actually lots of parts of our world are dystopias. There are some really, really crappy places in this world where bad things are happening. And I think reading these books is kind of an entertaining way to, to make you think about it, make you think about, you know, what direction our world's going in, uh, what our responsibilities are, how we would react in those kind of situations. So I think it just, there's something about it that fascinates people to, to jump into it and feel what it's like to be in that kind of a terrible existence. You, can, you always kind of think, uh, in those situations too, it's kind of like, what do you have left? What do you hold on to as a, as a human being in those moments? And what do you fight for? And what, uh, I think that when you're really just stripped down to who you are and the people around you, that's yeah. kind of those moments. You're laughing because it's, no. are you laughing <laughs> at me? Not at you. Being no. thoughtful. Are you laughing at my answer? No. Can we do the Another question again? out here. <laughs> oh, we got someone over here. We got someone over here. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Sam. I'm a huge <laughs> Team Wolf fan. Um, what was the hardest shoot to um, scene to shoot for this movie or Team Wolf? Both. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thomas, you go first. <laughs> I thought she'd be on set of Teen Wolf. Yeah, Thomas, whoa, whoa, whoa. Thomas came with me one time to, to Teen Wolf work time. No spoilers, guys. Um, uh, in this, um, a lot of the scenes 
I've gotten in trouble with this question before in the past, so I'm very hesitant to speak. Um, I'm like j right at the end of the Spice, what? <laughs> spice Girls. Um, um, There's a scene at the end maybe, that's very emotional, away. and he killed it. A diplomatic answer. Why don't we go yeah, to another any question? Any emotional scene in the movie, that was hard. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so my question is for Jacob. I kind of wanted to know, how does it feel based on making music and then having to do some filming? Like, what is that like, the difference? Um, oh, I, hey. oh, wait, where? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, actually, I, I don't think it's, I mean, of course it's um, him talking versus singing, but I, think, I don't think it's too different at all. I think. You know, um, you, you're still expressing yourself um, or expressing another person or a person you might relate to. So uh, I think it's all getting in front of the camera. Even when I go into the studio, it's all getting into character of the song and really uh, trying to get that emotion off. So, yeah, I think it's, um, it's not too different, actually. I think I find I'm, I'm more relaxed when I film. I feel like I'm more jittery with the music. I think that's because it's more, more of a passion for me. So, yeah. Question. Oh my God, they're fighting for the microphone. Oh wait, all right. <laughs> okay, my question is for Jacob. Um, what was your first thoughts when you found out that you got the part for the Maze Runner? I actually didn't even know what I was getting myself into, <laughs> actually. I was like, I read the script, I was like, well, I think a maze period just kind of interests people. Like, okay, wow, okay, let me just, let me, okay, I'll do the part, I'll do it. And uh, I read it and then uh, I got on set and I seen how, how Wes just had everything, how, like how Dylan was saying, everything laid out, the maze, the, the grievers, it was incredible. And it just made me more excited. I'm like, okay, I start trying on outfits and I wanna look like this, you know, and stuff like that. And then uh, actually I read the book after we filmed. So I just saw everybody's faces a lot more clear when I read the, film, read the book, so it was cool. Over here, yes. Hi, um, I watched a movie yesterday and it was amazing and congratulations and my friend is gonna ask the question. Hi, um, yesterday I just wanna say the movie was amazing. You all guys did a great job. Uh, my question is for James. Um, you said yesterday that you finished like the series for The Eye of Minds. What is your next project that you're working on? Oh yeah. Thank you for the promotion of my new series. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's way better than The Maze Runner. You guys are going to love it. Oh. We're going to make a movie, all of us. Good. I have minds. Yeah. This time, Jacob will be the main character. No. Um, I, uh, I, I actually have a couple of things up my sleeve. Uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll be announcing it, so I can't really tell you, but it's going to be awesome. Yeah. More Maze Runner? Uh, no comment. All right. Another question. Yes. Hi, um, I'm Shauna, and my question is for Kaya. And um, <laughs> um, I know you as Effie from Skins, but. In <laughs> But oh, yeah. in, <laughs> Hi, sorry, Hi um, but in the Maze Runner, you play Teresa, who is supposed to have an American accent. So I wanted to know, like, did you have any difficulty, like, doing the American accent? Because I know whenever I try to do a British accent, it turns out really wrong. <laughs> um, I think it's, you know, it's always easier for British actors because we grow up watching American films and TV shows, and I watched a lot of Sabrina the Teenage Witch and <laughs> shit like that. Um, so we're kind of used to hearing it, um, but um, me and Will, we, we both, you know, changed our accents up, and it's just, just another little skill that you learn, and it's, it's a lot of fun to get to, to do. But it is tough, but, um, but they're all American, so it's cool. <laughs> Wait, th Thomas, you didn't, you didn't, so Thomas, you did not uh, do an American accent. In no, that, that's my attempt at an American, that American I'm embarrassed. <laughs> That's not very good. What? <laughs> Can I? 
I'm no okay. No answer. <laughs> well, another question. Oh, right here, right here. Hi. Um, I'm Monica, and Kaya, can I just say, like, you've been my role model ever since I watched um, Skins. Thank you, Like, Donna. I just thought, <laughs> I loved how Effie was able to, like, be her own person. I don't know. But my question is for all of you. And do you guys have any little, like, um, like, quirky little things you do before you start filming to, like, get into the mindset of your character? Oh. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say butt pats, but then the character thing happened. <laughs> exactly. I'll say that on, on the banishment day, I, I, I tend to listen to music. Yeah. I listen to a lot of music. Yeah, Chris didn't speak to any of us that day. Yeah, yeah no. Wait, what's What'd your you about to be Did banished from the Glade music? <laughs> it was like you were really banished. Black well, it's Sabbath. because this was, it was the third time we were going to try to do it, and I'm like, we're going to do it today? <laughs> Put the music in, we're going to do it today. <laughs> and they, we did. I, I played with the fake knives they gave me. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, I just kind of... <laughs> had to take a moment, because I think uh, we filmed so much, we filmed some overnight shoots as well, so we would be laughing a lot, but things had to get really, really serious, so we had to, I had to like step back for a minute and just get in character, then action, so. Yeah. Coffee, that's the important, coffee. Um, <laughs> yes, where's the microphone? Right here, right here. Oh my God, oh my God. Thank you. I didn't think the mic was gonna come to me. Um, first of all, I want to say that you guys are such a good-looking bunch of people, all of you right here. <laughs> and um, my question is for Dylan. You play such great, intense character styles, Thomas. And I want to know what's next for you. What kind of role do you want to play? Like the villain, anti-hero? How about Thomas in the Scorch Trials? Just Styles and Thomas still. I'll expand. There'll be more. But yeah, I have to. I will be doing Thomas and Scorch Trials if all goes according to plan uh, in a month. And then season five of Teen Wolf. Yeah! All right, I think we have time for one more question. One more question. Who has the micro? This gentleman here, yes. Hi. Sorry for my strange accent. Um, we're from Switzerland here. It's a great accent. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Um, we also watched the movie last night. You guys did an awesome job. I really loved it. And thank you, James, for writing such an awesome story. And my question is for all of you, um, how is it strange or is it normal to see you, see yourself on a big screen? It's horrible. <laughs> so strange. It's, I can't, I don't like to watch myself at all. Um, but I liked watching this because they're my friends and it's fun to go, oh, look at Dylan doing that funny face. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. whenever Will was being pouty, I was like, oh, boo-hoo. And like, <laughs> that's fun to see, but myself, I can't watch it. Yeah, it is a little strange, I think. <laughs> oh, they, they want more questions. We're, we're losing them. Bye, guys. It's crumbling. Where are you guys going? <laughs> All right. Well, I, <laughs> I think that wraps up our Q&A for tonight. And we're, right, guys. we're doing a signing something. Something else is happening. Thank you, good night! Thanks, guys. <laughs>